Let's say we're trying to solve the following equation. Square root of 3x plus 9 minus the square root of x plus 4 equals negative 1. We start by recognizing that we have two radicals on the same side of the equation, so we begin by isolating each radical on one side. This can be e easily accomplished by moving the square root of x minus 4 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and now at this stage, we can square both sides since we have a single radical on each side of the equation. Doing so results in squaring square root of 3x plus 9, which gives us just 3x plus 9. And on the right-hand side, when we square square root of x plus 4 minus 1, we can either use a special product formula or we can just FOIL it out. Either of those approaches gives us x plus 4 minus 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 1. We see that we're basically back to square 1 with another built-in or hidden in plain sight radical equation. We solve these by isolating the radical. So we begin by subtracting the x, 4, and the 1 over to the left-hand side and combining like terms 3x minus x gives us 2x, 9 minus 4 gives us 5, and 5 minus 1 gives us the 4 on the left-hand side. The right-hand side stays as it is. Now since we have the radical isolated on the right-hand side, I can go ahead and square both sides of the equation. The left-hand side, when squared, will give us 4x squared plus 16x plus 16, this can be used, or this can be verified by using the special product formula, or you can FOIL it out term by term. The right hand side, when squared, the negative 2 times negative 2 will give a 4. And when we square the square root of x plus 4, those two operations cancel each other out, leaving behind just x plus 4. We can distribute the 4 on the right hand side to get 4x plus 16. And here again, we're back to our basics. We have a quadratic equation. We solve these by setting the equation equal to zero and then perhaps factoring. We can do the exact same thing here by subtracting the 4x and the 16 over to the left-hand side. And at this stage, we can combine like terms. The 4x is by itself, I'm sorry, the 4x squared is by itself, so it stays there. 16x minus 4x gives us the 12x. 16 minus the 16 gives us 0. Now at this stage, we can recognize that we have a GCF of 4x, so we can factor it out, leaving behind x plus 3 inside the parentheses, equaling 0. Since the left-hand side is factored and the right-hand side is equal to 0, we can invoke the zero product property to say that either 4x must equal 0, which means that x must equal 0, dividing both sides by 4, or x plus 3 must equal 0, and subtracting the 3 over to the other side indicates that x must equal negative 3. This gives us two potential solutions, and since the indices in the problem were even, we have to check our answers. So on the left-hand side, we replace all the x's with zeros. 3 times 0 is just 0, and 0 plus 4 in the other radical is simply 4. Now 0 plus 9 on the first radical simplifies to just the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is simply 3, square root of 4 is simply 2, and we're trying to determine if 3 minus 2 equals negative 1, which, unfortunately for us, it does not. This indicates that x equals 0 is not a solution to the equation. Now we can do the same exact computation or evaluation with negative 3. So replacing all the x's in the equation with negative 3 gives us the following. 3 times the negative 3 gives us negative 9. And in the other radical, negative 3 plus 4 gives us 1. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So we have the square root of 0 minus the square root of 1, and we're trying to determine if that evaluates to negative 1. Well, the square root of 0 is simply 0, and the square root of 1 is just 1. 0 minus 1 does indeed equal negative 1, 
So we have a true statement when we plug in negative 3 for x in the original equation. This proves or indicates to us that x equals negative 3 is indeed a solution to the original equation.